Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are returning to our realistic solar system. So if you didn't see last episode definitely go ahead and check that one out first. That is where we made the Pandora moon and its corresponding planet from the Avatar series here. So we threw that in and made a replica of it. So remember it's not an exact copy but we made something that's quite heavily inspired by it. So we've obviously got the Pandora moon here, the very Earth-like moon in orbit of the smaller um, gas giant. Um, as well, which I think is actually a fairly decent, it's actually the second biggest gas giant in here, I don't know why I thought it was a smaller one, but there you go, I think it was less massive though, wasn't it, than its sister one here, yeah, oh, oh no, no, Eurotune's actually more massive, but smaller, okay, but yeah, there's our lineup at the moment, so we've got three gas giants here, very nicely uh, designed, if I say so myself, um, looking good, and then actually we need to do the name um, Salby here, so yeah, the, I don't know how I didn't remember this, but yeah, it's Polyphemus, that's the name of the gas giant, so there you go. Excellent. Cool, so that's those guys all sorted and completed. Right. So back onto the system itself. So we're throwing the save now, we've named that. So what we've got to do today is we've got to do a bit of sort of housekeeping and also your suggestions in the comments of the last video as well. So the first comment here was actually a really good one. So this is from the user Just Hair Space, and it said, Make a long period comment and name it math. Which, if you didn't know, is this channel's name from like 2016 and 17. This channel used to go by a different name, not Neptunian guy. So we're going to go with that. We're going to have a long distance comet and yeah, name it the channel's former name. So we haven't actually added a comet in yet, but let's definitely go ahead and do this. So, random asteroid. Very nice. We're going to place it on a, a long sort of orbit. We're going to place it eh, somewhere there. So it's actually passing by the outermost gas giant, Eurotune, at the moment. We're going to squeeze this in, so also we need a bit of math, looking good. Make it a make it a larger or smaller kind of one, maybe a little bigger. It needs to still be an actual asteroid, not a sphere. Um, we'll give it customization since it is a unique object to some extent. It's down here, still receiving starlight from Sirius. And then try and give it a texture, what's it, well, planet 15, that's the one I always like, I like the craters. Yeah, there you go. So, looking pretty cool. Right. Base colour. Well, it's going to be fairly bog standard, of course. So, go with the black patches there. A little more greyer. And then just white in the higher elevation. Just have a mix of colour there. Looking good. Maybe make the, the black just a little more regular grey. Or maybe like a, almost a brownish kind of shade. Just to have some colour variety mixed in there. Looking good. And the same with this grey as well. I may just give this a slight orange tune to it looking good and then the white color up here I don't know if it's into this almost a sandy kind of yellow in a way something like that there you go cool right and then simply what I'm gonna do here is uh, terrain yeah that looks cool yeah look how much more detail that looks just turning that up that looks great right and then simply with this maybe we'll give it a bit of water as well just um, like an actual comet so it can have a bit of a spray when it flies by the star. And then all we need to simply do is actually give it its orbit. So we need to make it eccentric, of course, 0 0.2, start with that. Right. Now, increase that more and then decrease the orbital period. So squeeze it in there, like so. So we've ordered to, we'll have it hop in the inner solar system, but this orbit could change quite drastically. So we're going to make it fly roughly by this, and then we need to make the eccentricity a lot bigger. Something more like that. So it's not going to go all the way to the ice giant, I don't think, Eurotune, but we'll have it kind of flying in that zone there. So it goes past Janitas here, which is our Earth-like world. So it goes in that inner, very inner solar system region there. Looking good. And we'll give it a bit of eccentricity as well, because so far this system is quite a flat plane. So we'll give this a little more like that. There you go. Great. So that is the asteroid or comet known as Math now added. Sweet. Right, and then uh, let's go ahead and do that. Save it up. Replace. Cool. All right, next up. This is some Jordan and uh, Kyle in the, in the comments as well. Do a super Earth on the outer reaches of the system. So this is one thing we're actually thinking of doing as well. Kind of like the planet Hoth from Star Wars. So if you've not seen Empire Strikes Back, well, what are you doing? Go and watch it. But secondly, that's the snow planet from the start of the film. So we're going to go ahead and make an object like that. So it's going to be cold. Very, very snow, very, very harsh conditions on the outer regions. So it's going to be further out than our dominant gas giant. I'm going to place it in between dominant gas giant and Eurotune here. That's a nice region we got to place an object like that. So 
we're going to go ahead and do that. Maybe a slightly more eccentric or elongated orbit as well, just to match because we have got that dominant gas giant nearby. So, random Rocky. Right, we're going to place you roughly there. Right. And maybe slightly extent or inclined as well, just to represent the maybe more more harsh, unstable kind of orbit being close to the gas giant there. So we're going to give it a slight tilt. Something like that. Not too insane, but just a, just a little more. Give it a little increase. Somewhere like that. So it's off the main plane as well. Right. And then eccentricity. So I want to give you a slight eccentric. So then I just need to rotate it round. More like that. I was like, on the big plane, so yeah, I think that's looking good. I mean, just trying to get it in the correct region. I think somewhere like that would be fairly well. Cool. So we won't go the exact same name, we'll call it Hoffers. <laughs> I don't know. Right, there you go. Right, so this is a super earth, so we need it to be fairly large. Let's actually get it in the lineup with the rocky wells. We'll make this our largest of the rocky planets, I think. So we're going to make this a pretty big, it's a pretty big deal. So bigger than the inner rice rocky. We're going to place it there. So we're very, very substantially large. We'll put a two radius of left. So very substantially large sized object. Right. Base color. So let's go all the way back out to the depths of the system now. All the way over here. Right. It's a snow world. It's not going to be your friend. It's going to be very, very cold. So a barren rocky landscape underneath and then the rest of it we're going to need a lot of water placed on top like this uh, and then we want to simply settle the water big ocean there Oof. so how does that actually look on there that's a huge ocean uh, but yeah I want to try and get a cool looking texture for it so I'm thinking oh this is this would be good Pluto Pluto always gives you a good texture maybe a Pluto mixed with a Sedna see what that comes up with how does that? How's that look? Nah. Mm. Nah, the Sedna texture map. Sedna doesn't have a proper map, actually. Let's go Let's go Pluto and 15. They're always... That's a nice crater combo there. And then just lower the water down a bit. Then you get something like that. Maybe a little less. Yeah. Settle water. Right, so how does that, how does that look? Decent bit of land. Decent bit of sea. But again, this is going to be all frozen anyway, so this is going to be at, I don't know, minus, we'll just, we'll start at minus 100, it's going to be a little cooler than what Hoff is in Star Wars, but uh, nonetheless, that should work fairly nicely, and then we just need to freeze it, like so, there you go. Now, the rocky areas there, we need to make those a little more, make the, oh yeah, oh, that does look cool. Right, and then turn that up, and then contrast, we lower that down, just to make it look more snow-like. So it's still got its craters. And it obviously needs an atmosphere, doesn't it? So it's going to have a light, sort of hazy blue atmosphere. It'll be a little thicker as well. So where are we? So atmosphere. What am I doing? So further down. I wish atmosphere had its own. Because I know I've, I'm still used to what it was long ago, where atmosphere had its own sort of tab. Right. Um, surface pressure. And we're going to go over... Similar, similar sort of... I mean, it's more... 1.4. Then, um, atmosphere. I always turn this off because I like the actual colour. Um, and then a lighter shade of blue. And quite a pale white like that. And then maybe make it a little more opaque. Yeah, guys, that's looking like a realistic sort of frozen super earth there. Looking quite good, actually. I do like the way that has turned out. Very nice indeed. Actually, what am I doing? Watercolour won't really make much of a difference, but we'll just sweep that. Maybe in the future it will warm up, because, you know, remember, we will be evolving this system to death once the system is complete. So that is the long sort of... Um, actually, vegetation, maybe if it's hatable, we'll have it on. Maybe that'll be a, something that will appear down the line. If this world ever... If Sirius's hatable zone ever reaches this far, this could be a safe haven in the future for this system. So, looking good. But other than that, I know it's a quick build, but I think it's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. So it's, got, it's got its water. Yeah. I, I don't see um, what else it needs adding. It's nicely built. Nice super earth. Frozen up. Also, if you take the snow and ice off, that's all your water patches there. In these regions. Maybe we'll just so we know what colour the ice is. Maybe we'll give it a very, very faint shade of blue just to represent where those oceans are. Yeah. Cool. 
Clouds. It doesn't have any clouds yet. Where are the clouds? I think it's too far away to really have clouds. But we will go with a thick and maybe stormy weather because Hoff's conditions aren't the best. So there you go. And that is Hoffers. <laughs> it on its side as well we'll stick with that and it will give it a few moons as well because it did have some in the star wars so or it did have near, near the, in the hoff system so it did have multiple things nearby so we'll give it a few moons to represent that so we can go fully go with whatever we fancy for these so go one moon if we'll go two moons it's still on a, a rocky world so it's not gonna have the most moons like a gas giant and maybe um a smaller moon on the outer region is quite far far out there maybe it'll break away in the future who knows but we'll go with that so two moons so this one's quite a substantial size anyway 0 0.3 radius of earth i'm gonna half that down and it comes with a titan like uh, atmosphere now i've done that you know what we're gonna stick with that i'm gonna stick with a titan like atmosphere because you know we don't really have any of these oh i do like the way that looks actually <laughs> well that's almost um that's a very nice spawn the game's given us there i think what we'll do is we can kind of turn this water into maybe a methane-like condition like Titan as well. So we'll go with that light. Not light just starting to represent methane. So it's a, a light sort of shade of blue. Just to represent that. Same with the ice and snow. So this will probably freeze. But yeah, just to represent the methane in some aspect, we will go with that. Um, also, I know methane, it's actual colour. It's a little more or less exciting. But we'll just have that just so to represent it. Uh, settle water. Uh, it's currently, is it melt, melt, settle, increase the water, okay, play, so looking very, very peculiar so far, but the, the texture is coming, I'm very happy with the way that looks actually, so there's your sea levels there, settle, oh that's a little too much, settle like that, freeze it, because it's going to be cold anyway, there you go, so there's your patches representing the methane and ice to some extent, oh, that's maybe in the wrong button. Freeze. There you go. So this represents your frozen uh, liquid, or your, or your. This actually represents your liquid methane, obviously, because methane isn't in the game yet, but it is coming, and I'm very excited for it. But we're gonna stick with that. Oh, the surface texture. I mean, it already looks fairly well. I may give it just a slightly more browner shade, to some extent. It's a middle elevation, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one we want, just to represent that little more the methane light world looking good and then turn the terrain up this is this one spawned in quite nicely actually i really do like the way this world looks what textures is this using then so this is a ra completely random generation 14 and 11 remember that that's a nice combo there looking great right and then um atmosphere and clouds there you go so it's a titan like world very thick atmosphere but what we'll do, just so we can see a little under there we're going to stick with that and then atmosphere wise Maybe we'll make it a little more like the Titan-like atmosphere with that orange sort of tune to it. Ray light will turn you down just a bit, but I do want to keep it on. There you go. So you've got a, t a very Titan kind of S kind of world going on here. With that thick atmosphere hiding that surface. There you go. There's Aurapax in orbit of Hoffers. And then we've got Ido over here. Definitely the less exciting of the two moons. And we'll leave it the way it is as a boring rock because they can't all be exciting now. So I'm going to grey it out like a regular traditional moon and there you go simple as that so that's planet 16 and planet 5 there so that's one of the good old cracked up textures and actually that probably fits the theme of this colder region of the system here and then lastly the furthest out moon we've got mole over here again you're going to be fairly basic unfortunately and you know what i'll leave it exactly the way it is it looks good actually like that so there you go great so that's another object we can uh tick off the list there so two fairly boring moons then you got the one slightly more titan like exciting moon closer in looking good very very pleased with that actually i think that looks uh, pretty good obviously a quick job not the quick not the longest uh design but i think either way it's still quite very nice i mean ice worlds are a lot easier to build than obviously earth like worlds so you can go with that but yeah i think that looks pretty good actually but yeah, you guys will be the judges of that in the comments as always. Let me know what you think. I mean, this moon is probably quite similar to the other methane moon we have uh, we made earlier in the system. So there, there's this one. Then the other moon is this one here, Titanus. But this one is a lot more exotic colouring. 
but that's probably the moon in so you can see there's it's methane patches there the blue regions to represent it but this one's got definitely more of a deeper titan like atmosphere on it look at all these objects smoking up <laughs> it's only a, it's only a teaser of what's to come in the future unfortunately but we will get to the future in the coming weeks because we're almost done curating this system now all right there you go great stuff all right so Hoffers itself, oh, fuck, oh, I'm very pleased with that. I mean, maybe I just make it a little less, little less opaque, just so we can see to the ground a bit more. The clouds are obviously still pretty thick. That's a nice blue, right? I mean, during a snowstorm, it probably would look more like this. I mean, obviously, if it had changing conditions like Mars, for instance, where you can get the dust storms, you know, it probably would be something like that. I'm actually just going to half the opacity of the clouds, just so you can see to the surface a bit more. And then just uh, increase that. Uh, leave that around 44, I think. I think that's all right. So that's Hoffers. That's almost a green atmosphere there. Do we stick with that? Or maybe keep it a little more on the blue end of the spectrum. Yeah, I'm thinking more blue. Maybe increase it just a tad more to the blue. Or the sky blue, maybe. Cyan blue. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. I think that's all right. Obviously, you can turn the ray on and off. But we'll leave that, leave that like that for the most part there. So there you go, a frozen ice world. So that's Hoffers. Right. There you go. Cool. Right, so we're getting a. This is looking good now. Right, next up. So we've done the Super Earth. Very nice. Let's see if there's any other ones that'd be pretty cool. Can you do water planet? Is composition being literally one hundred percent water? Uh, the inner solar system is too grouped up for it to, to have another rocky world in there, unfortunately. But we could, in theory, try and squeeze it in as a moon somewhere, as a very high ball of water. Uh, we can try and squeeze it in because I do want to add another gas giant at the edge of this system. Make a frigid Neptune-like planet with lots of Pluto-like moons. I mean, again, yet yeah, we will be making one more ice giant on the edge of this system, and um, we'll do that in the next episode. Purple gas giant with a Pluto-like moon very far out. So again, a lot of people are suggesting this final gas giant that's going to be on the outer edges. So we definitely will do that next episode. That is the plan. So yeah, keep your uh, keep stay tuned for that because we're definitely going to do that. Right, where are we? Let's continue. Thanks. Yeah, some people are asking for um, dwarf planets as well. So we're going to do with those. We're going to stick with those for this now. So there we are. Looking good. All right. So just had a final sort of look at the comments here. Right. Now, dwarf planets. So small moons. We're going to have these roughly further out than Eurotune. So we're going to place them in this region here. And I think the final gas chant would be somewhere out here. So already at over, so that's six AU there, isn't it? So we haven't gone exactly super far yet in this system. Oh, never mind. Hang on. Uh, where are we? So it's orbit in the star. It doesn't say where whereabouts distance was. I'm just going to place a dwarf planet there now. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> Let's uh, quickly just put that back down. I just want to see what distance we are, because we haven't gone like stupidly far. Oh, no, 70 AU. I mean, that's all right, actually. So this is 70 AU. Okay, so if I half this down, that's fifth. Well, that's 39 AU. So if we go roughly to Neptune distance, that's there. That's where Neptune would normally sit, around our own sun. So we've got quite a, quite a jump there. Maybe we just have a few dwarf planets sitting in this region. So we're going to have... Yeah, we'll, we'll roll with that. So um, random dwarf, small moon again. We could have another planet. Another rocky planet, possibly out here as well. So, there we are. Have them slightly off plane as well, but we're going to go over a bunch of dwarf planets in this set region. And we're going to give them a nice inclined orbit kind of set as well. So, I'm going to go with. I think we'll go with these major ones. So, that's one, two, three, four. So, we'll go with the fifth one in this region as well okay and then what we're going to do is going to give them all more eccentric orbits as well to represent this so we've got very small ones here right we need some names for some of these as well so definitely get uh get your get your keyboard type in there 
Right, eccentricity, so. Let's multiply this up, so there you go. So orbits like this, and I'm just going to shrink that down just to bring it back in. Maybe like slightly less eccentric there. So orbits like this, I want to have a, a good bunch of these all flung in here. Maybe pointed in the same way as the comet as well. That could be quite cool. So see, see how we do. So again, turn this up. That one's in the wrong direction. So we'll rotate that round like that. See, where's this one gone as well? We need this one's this one. There it is. So again, with you going to rotate it round like that. And have them all kind of in the same sort of direction. Kind of like our own solar system has to an extent. So we'll go 0 0.2. That's always a good word number to start with. And again, have them all in this sort of direction. Maybe some more than others. So we have this one going further out, for instance. So a slightly further out orbit. But then again, we shrink this down, half that down. There you go. And again, with these guys, give that a more eccentric orbit. Maybe even a Sedna. See, that's, that's too much. We've overshot it there. But more like a Sedna kind of distance as well. Maybe one of those goes in really far inwards and then really far outwards. I think this guy's still not fully locked onto the star there. Let's quickly just check that. There we go. Oh, that's not right. Let me just auto orbit that again because I think I've mucked that one up a bit. Right, there we go. Right. Eccentricity 0 0.2. There you go. Right, now. Is that more? Right, now I should be able to... Yeah, there we go. Right. Rotate it round. Shrink this. So that cuts in there. And again, yeah, so orbits like this. Uh, then we've got this one over here. Again, same with you. So I've actually shrunk that orbit, but then we make it more eccentric. 0 0.5. Woohoo! Right. Again, in this sort of orbital plane there. There you go. All right. So kind of kind of representing the damage caused by the amount of gas giants, especially the dominant gas giant, you know, thrusting all of these objects around. So we're going to sit with something like that. So they do kind of see one of them does actually cross the orbit of Eurotune, so kind of like Pluto and Neptune there. So that's pretty cool as well. Looking good. Okay, what's going on here? Why are these moons all? What did I just do? <laughs> Control. I think I've just broken something. Oh no! I just did something bad. I don't know what I did. I, did I drag it by? I must have dragged him. Because look, the moons are all messed up. Oh no! Okay, everyone. So I am back. It just took me about ten minutes to tweak and repair this. Is when I had um, last saved the simulation, it didn't actually save Hoffers. So I had to basically go into the autosave, grab Hoffers and its moons, and then put them into a fresh save before we actually added them in in the first place. Because <laughs> for some reason, I always say save, but for some reason I didn't save after I created Hoffers. So we had quite a uh, issue, so I had to actually re-add those all in. I've also added um, some new dwarf planets to go with it as well, so I've got those roughly where I want them. But one more thing as well, just back to... Um, Polyphemus here in Pandora. So I had a comment here. So this is from Google Guy. Now he was saying a blue gas giant close to the star isn't really realistic. Now, yeah, I do agree with him. Um, also, um, have a soft spot for Hassel moons around the gas giant. You really made it look nice. Thank you very much. Glad you like it. So he said the density of the gas giant is impossible, though. It won't be able to support its own mass. So what I've done is I've given it a tweak and I've roughly put it to a Neptune kind of density. So I've, I've fixed that. So that's roughly small. So I've, the planet's a little smaller than its original size as well. So if we just go into the list here. So it's had a small... So it's no longer the, the second biggest gas giant. So it's now a more of a smaller world. But it's still kind of... If we put it into kilometres, it's it's roughly Uranus-Neptune size now. So we can get away with that um, roughly. And then also about it being too close to star. Um, if we just go back here. So it's still sitting at 6 AU. So it's... I do agree. You know, normally at this distance you'd have more of a regular gas giant. But let's just say for... Just just to make it fit. Maybe it formed further out and it somehow got pulled inwards. Maybe the other, maybe the dominant gas giant has something to do with that. I mean, that, I guess that's our explanation of that. But yeah, anyways, nonetheless, fix the density on that um, for you there as well. And yeah, I guess, yeah, the only reason I could come up with for why it's closer to the star is maybe it had an interaction with uh, Akumi over here, which is right, it's closer to the star. But I mean, again, it's... It's nice, giant. It's still in the minus temperatures, and it's 
12 year orbits i mean it's not like it's ultra close like it's a hot neptune but yeah i think you know we can i think we can just about squeeze that in and get away with that but anyways moving on to the actual new stuff so hoffers i've respawned this in so i had to actually freshly put all these guys in but they've still got all their original characteristics um that were saved so yeah they're all still the same appearance that they had previously so yeah these guys are all uh, plugged in as well so i've just called them b c and d because i needed to save them and bring them over so they're all fine so that's fine uh, and obviously over here Eurotune. i don't know i must have dragged the planet itself and messed something up for all those moons to go weird so that's all fine as well i've run the simulation they're all running fine so i don't know what caused that a uh, little bit of a uh, miscreance there um and then yeah anyways onto the dwarf planets now so this is all saved up to this point i've got them all here looking good obviously this one here actually crosses eurotune's orbit as well and then they've all got a slightly eccentric kind of orbit pushing them a little further out here as well so i think the final gas giant and uh, we can spawn it in now but we're going to customize that next episode so we'll go random um where are we? random gas giant the last gas giant is probably going to sit somewhere here in this region so i'm going to place it somewhere there like that and that will be the final the final gassy so right now what's this mass so it's only 30 so right now we'll just someone will come up with someone can come up with a name for this um right now that's final gassy and this will be a a bluish whitish maybe purpley kind of shade so when i say purple i mean a very kind of light shade because someone did request the purple but i think it had just a rough draft it's gonna maybe sort of these sort of colors it's gonna be quite a I want it to be more of a bland world, like Uranus, for example. But, you know, obviously purple's not the most realistic colour, so it'd have to be a very, very pale shade of purple. But I'm thinking something around this sort of colour, a very pale kind of shade. That'll be the final gassy, which we'll get onto next episode. Um, let's just highlight that as well so we know where it is. But just so we can kind of see the beginning of the finished product, this is roughly what we're looking at. And then orbit for this as well we're going to give this a slightly eccentric orbit as well so we will uh, see how that all comes into play so stay tuned for next episode where we do the final gas giant and once that's done we can then get on to the evolving part of this system so we will uh, see how that plays out but i think the final gassy will have it in an orbit kind of like this 262 years so it's in a decent orbit but you know it's sort of slinging in this sort of region and then we're going to give it a slightly inclined orbit as well but remember this is not for today's episode this will be customized next episode and then um give you a slight uh tilt like that that should be very interesting once we get onto it so at its distance it should be receiving some light still it is but as far as we know, right now, that's the final gassy. Unless we have any suggestions for anything further out. I mean, again, there'd just be more dwarf planet stuff. So maybe we could squeeze a few more. But let's see how we do. Maybe we'll throw a few more of that next episode. But anyways, onto these dwarf planets I've just spawned in. So there's the math asteroid still. Right. Let's get customizing. So the texture we saw earlier I liked was 11 and 14, if I remember right. So I'm going to go with that again. 14 and 11. That made quite a cool looking combo when we combine those. So dwarf planets, I mean, they're not going to be the most prettiest looking things i mean they're going to be small icy worlds you know not too much going on in terms of uh fanciness so again it's going to be the more bland looking world why do i put a blue that doesn't make much sense more something more like that i think would be more appropriate so it's cool small ice looking worlds this one's more mountainous for example and then we could throw an atmosphere or two on some of these as well uh, size wise i mean moon 0.2 moons so i mean i think pluto is probably a good representation to use here because pluto is the largest of the kuiper objects that we know uh, size wise mass wise it is actually iris so pluto and iris are our kind of benchmark so that that's how large it can be roughly so we can make this guy a little bigger so pluto's radius is about 1300 on kilometers so we've got to kilometers i don't know how many kilometers so pluto is roughly 13 about about that well, it's about, I know it's 13 something. I can't remember off the top. I think it's 1387 Pluto. So we'll go 1315 on this. This is a Pluto sized dwarf there. Looking good. And then we'll give it a cheeky, a very, very cheeky little atmosphere. So 0 0.08, something just so very small, a little minor, but it's got a little bit of atmosphere going on there. Go have a bland white kind of shade, I think. There you go. And then that's that. That's the first of Dwarf Planets. Do we want to add moons to these? Ah, we can add a couple. I think we can get away with a couple. But yeah, we want to, we're want still going for that realistic look. though. So some of these could be a little more low. And they're not going to have just loads and loads of moons. Because that's not really realistic at that point. So where are we? Uh, 
interface that's what we're after cool i mean we can give it a give it a cheeky little moon i mean these things don't have a lot of mass to really hold on to a lot so i'm thinking you know, it's going to be you know a very small moon plus maybe just a couple of that so we might like this would be but let's for instance say this is our pluto replica they have a couple asteroid moons a little further out just to just to throw in that little bit of extra um as it is one of the larger dwarf planets for instance so again these guys would have slightly eccentric values some of these moons so for instance we will do that on the further out moon so it kind of represent like nix and hydra for instance around pluto they'd have slightly more tilted orbits and things like that so we're gonna go with you know, you know things more like this and then obviously the central moon here this is your Charon kind of look or your Charon kind of replica in a way so you're taking a bit of inspiration from Pluto and Charon for these two but you know so something like that there you go and then obviously you got your upper moon so there's one dwarf planet still the deal already um, there but again these are fairly basic builds i mean they're not we're not going for crazy customization we're going for sort of realistic kind of stuff that you'd expect to see in this sort of region so nothing too exciting unfortunately <laughs> but um yeah let's get those all customized out we won't spend a lot of time on them for instance this one this is a lone small object we're going to leave that alone that's not getting any moons or anything so again pretty pretty basic bog standard also if you want to name some of these let me know in the comments and we'll get some names for all the Romanian worlds. So we've got Fittiness over here. Again, a small moon. or I say small moon, small kind of object. That's what we'll make it a little bigger there, but not too much going on. Colour-wise, again, I'm not keen on... Some of the random generation colours are kind of questionable, I think, sometimes. <laughs> there you go. We can get away probably that dark sort of shade of greyish green, maybe. We'll stick with that. Again, a more darker world, but we will stick with that. the grey trails as well okay over here got this one oh an orange an orange kind of world okay what's going on here but just the more generic look to it you know it needs that so there you go it looks all right it looks all right to be honest i mean it's just what you'd expect out of a world like this it's cold frozen rocky kind of uh composition far out there you go this one here okay i'm going to do something a little different here we're actually going to use i'm going to make this a little bigger as well so go to kilometers Let's actually go a little bigger, a step higher than Pluto, 1,400. So a little, little bigger there. And then what I'm going to do is, we're actually going to use the Pluto texture. Pluto is actually a very nice texture to use. We'll go Pluto with a little bit of minus, maybe. If you've got some craters. It's getting a little darker out here, if you notice as well. It's a little dimmer. And we'll go with the kind of traditional Pluto kind of brown you get with it. So you get something like that. So it's a similar look to Pluto, but you still get a nice kind of uh, look to it. There you go. Not too shabby. Maybe maybe make this guy a little more. Almost like a creamier shade. No, very, very, I'm talking extremely light kind of shade in there. But something like that. Mix that in and then make this guy a little, a little brighter there. Okay. So there you go. So that's how that's larger of the of the um, dwarfs, and then we'll give it maybe a cheeky moon as well. One bigger moon. Oh no way! Small moon, fairly close by. Maybe a binary, in a way. But yeah, we'll tidily lock this guy to the parent as well, kind of like a Pluto Charon kind of mix as well. Uh, motion. Tidy lock is there. So that's now tidily locked. Yeah, definitely tidy locked to the parent. And they're quite close together, so maybe, maybe they'll set up a little binary, but, you know, they are pretty close. Look at the, you can see the Mimus crater on that moon. There, there, there you go, check that out. That's pretty cool. Right, actually, what we'll do for you as well, to get the extra detail, we will turn up this. Yeah, oh yeah, that looks good. Right, and then the moon, same with you. Fairly generic looking. No atmospheres on these guys. A darker surface, why not? There you go. So you got those two together. If they break away, they break away. That's just the fate of the system. So I think that's all the dwarfs customised now. Is that everyone? I think it looks like it. Yeah, I think so. Alright, and I think what we'll do to finish up this episode... We're going to go with one more. I think we'll go over random moves. So maybe, yeah, or, no, small, we'll go stick with small moon. We'll just have something a little more... No, I'm talking really Sedna like this time. So something more around. I'm going to place it. I'm going to initially place it there, but 
now this is the this is the crazy thing so we're gonna go straight to eccentricity go with a zero I'm gonna try a 0 0.5 something more like that on the opposite end of the gas giant as well kind of like how said they're in the theoretical planet 9 would kind of appear and then eccentricity will give you a nice kind of tilt there rotate it round so it's still one of the further dwarfs out there, but it does cross the final gas giant's orbit a little bigger than everyone else. Maybe, maybe just a, maybe even a bit more. We give it, you know, give it everything. Let's try and go a little, you know, really, really fast or something like that. There you go. So this is actually effectively the furthest object out, apart from that little ring particle you may have just seen there. Forget that. <laughs> right, and then over here, this is bonk. I like that. We'll keep it. Uh, we'll keep this one as bonk. I think. <laughs> So how, how large is this guy? So 480 is going to get a little bigger. Not the biggest, but, you know, around six, seven hundred, seven hundred. Yeah, about that. And then um, give it a little bit of freezing water. Give it a little, just a tad bit of water. I said losing the material anyway, never mind. Um, it's too small, even though at this range. Um, I mean, yeah, we'll just leave it as a, this will just be a dry kind of rock. And maybe, maybe we'll give it a, a Sedna-inspired bit of red to the surface. Deep red there. In the middle elevation, you go this very sort of pale red. So kind of represent the fallings uh, of some kind. So something like that. And then that's the white, maybe. Maybe make this. No, I like that. It's the deep red, actually. That looks quite good, actually. So kind of representing Sedna's fallings. Make, make, in the, for instance. Well, even Pluto's brown areas there, known as fallings. So we've kind of got an object representing that at this point as well. So maybe we'll give it the good old red trail that I'd normally give Sedna, for instance. Something like that. So that's on the deep, far side there. And speaking of Follins, that other that other one had like a black appearance. It wasn't. It was fittiness here. So this one, instead of having black, I'm going to give this the brownish red as well to represent Follins to an extent as well. I think that could be pretty awesome. So this color down here, I'm going to go for the red instead to kind of represent the Follins to an extent. So there you go. It's got that brownish look to it caused by that. Kind of like Pluto has as well, you know, the brownish area, Sedna, you know. Make Make, for instance, could have a possibly red kind of looking surface. So I think we'll stick with those. Oh, yeah. Maybe dim that down just a bit. There you go. Make that stand out a bit more. Yeah. All right, and there you go. So we'll get, again, this guy will give you a slightly more red trail to represent that. Cool. All right. So there you go. That is our sister grade. There's that little particle. Bye-bye. <laughs> But there we are. So on to the final episode now, possibly of making something in the final gassy. Just need to customize that up, give it some moons. And then if there's any final suggestions that you think are critical this system needs, let me know. But for now, I think that is roughly, pretend that's customized, but that is roughly the, pro the finished product that we're going to be evolving from birth to death now. Oh, my recording cut there. That was a bit weird. But anyways, guys, like I was saying, finishing up today's episode. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to press that like button. Subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers as well. I really appreciate all the support. And yeah, also leave a comment. What do you think um, are the final things that need adding to this system? Please also note, you know, there's quite a lot of comments on these ones. There's a lot of suggestions. So if I do miss one, I do apologize. There is quite a lot, so I won't be able to pick them all either. So yeah, please keep that in mind. But again, I really, really do thank you for all the feedback and stuff you guys have given. We're kind of making this as almost a group project in some way. You know, a lot of suggestions have been thrown into this. Also, I need some names as well. So if you've got any names, throw them in the comments. It does it for those dwarf planets, for instance. Maybe the moons of um, Hophorus as well. We could definitely, uh, maybe, maybe those guys could be renamed because right now they're just um, Hoffers, yeah, B, C, and D. So, for instance, we could give those guys some names. But yeah, I look forward to see what names you come up with for these as well, guys. But yeah, like I said, with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>